All right, what's up guys? So I'm gonna talk about how to make really nice renders on a bad computer without a good GPU. So when I started doing 3D art, I had a GTX 1060, which is not the worst GPU ever. It's not terrible, but it's not good. Um, you can see there's one here for like under $200, one under $300 here. They're pretty old. Um, so right now I'm running a 3090, but like I said, when I started, I, all I had was this. So it was, it was a lot slower and I, it, I think it was actually a good thing because it, because it taught me how to like optimize my scene properly. And um, I, I think that's really valuable to know even when you have a, a good graphics card. But if I compare now on a 3090 to what it was like back then on a 1060, the difference is gigantic. It's, um, it's huge how much of a difference having a 3090 makes in terms of just being able to work faster and get more stuff done uh, and just less pain. 3090 is so much better, but I did a lot of stuff on a 1060. So I'll show you here, here and down, all of the stuff that I did before that um, was all on a 1060. So I know what it's like to use a not amazing GPU. And um, you can, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it still. It's, there's lots of cool stuff you can do. So number one, Keep your rendered view small by using the box select feature. So let me show you this. So what the way I have this set up is, and I did this even when I had a, especially when I had a 1060, is you make sure you add a camera into your scene straight away and then go to like open up a new viewport. The way you do this is you just open up, like you, you know, you drag the corner of a window, you get the, the crosshair thing here, drag this open make this the 3D viewport, so just open up another viewport anywhere. And then what you can do is just go to rendered view in there, press N to hide this side menu, press T to get rid of that menu, uh, press this arrow, like this bow and arrow thing to get rid of whatever that is, press this button right here to get rid of all the overlays, and then right click the top and then uncheck this button right here, show header, uncheck that, and now you have a viewport that has no icons, no windows, no GUI, no selections, just pure render view. So that's, I really like that. Um, I'll just get rid of this. So I, that's what I have down here. It's just a, exactly what I just showed you. So what I like to do is just go to the camera view by pressing zero on the number pad. So just press zero, and then that'll just snap you into the camera view. Now it doesn't have this border by default, but all you have to do to get that is you just press control B on the keyboard, press Control B, that brings up this box select thing. And then if you just click and drag anywhere from like the top and anywhere from outside the camera view, like over here, just drag a selection over the entire camera view. You don't have to line it up properly, just go bigger than the actual camera view is. That will snap only the what the camera can see to what's being rendered. And it doesn't matter what focal length you have. If I zoom it in, zoom it out, it doesn't matter. So the reason I like to do this is for a couple of things. One, it makes it faster, but two, the, the only thing that people will see when you show them your artwork or your animations or whatever, the only thing they'll see is the camera view that you've set, right? They're not going to see the full like 3D. They can't like rotate and pan around. They can't navigate the scene. All they're going to see is this perspective right here, exactly where it's cut off right there um, from the camera view. So to me, it makes sense to always have that open anyways. And when you have it this way, you're actually, you have much less resolution that you have to render at once. And so it, it's a lot faster than if you have like the entire viewport rendering like this. If you just think about how many pixels are rendering in this in this amount here versus how many pixels are rendering in this amount here, and you could just zoom it out if you need it to be faster. This speeds it up a lot, uh, no matter what GPU you have, or if you're even running CPU, uh, just less pixels to render means it's gonna render faster. Okay, next tip, try viewport denoising. So this is this setting right here. So I have it on, which is my, my camera view is extremely snappy because of on a, on a 3090, this works super well with it. Um, you can see this is the way that it turned off, but if I turn it on, it's basically real time. It's usually faster than Eevee um, with a 3090 and this setting turned on. But sometimes this viewport denoising just doesn't really work with, depends on the GPU you have. Um, so I'd say give it a try and Sometimes it can really help and sometimes it just makes it worse. So turn it on, see if it works for you. Um, but you can see what it's doing. It's just denoising the viewport. Uh, for this, I have it on 
automatic here and I just have the albedo running in. So I don't know. I don't know if those are the best settings. Uh, I don't, but that's just what works for me. So play around with that and it may or may not help. Uh, but for me, it makes a big difference. Okay, the next thing is um, back to the box select method that I was showing you. When you're doing test renders along the way, so say you're working on your artwork, you're making something beautiful like this, and you want to see what it looks like by rendering the image, right? So you go and you press render and you want to just test out what it looks like. Instead of doing the entire image like this, if you have to wait like two minutes for that to render sometimes, that adds up a lot if you're doing a lot of test renders along the way. So what you should do is go back to render view here, box select, like instead of box selecting the entire thing, you can just box select little areas like this and then render just that. It'll render so much faster and you'll get an idea of what the whole thing looks like a lot quicker than if you wait, you know, two minutes for this entire thing to load, make a change, render it again, wait two minutes for the whole thing to load, or longer, sometimes 10 minutes, you know, depending on how slow your computer is. So another thing you can do is like, if you need to see what the whole thing looks like all together, but you still want to use this kind of method, you could just select a, a strip down the middle like that, um, or even thinner, like just to get as, as few pixels rendering as possible, but still being able to see what, like, what your whole image looks like overall. So I would just do something like that, let that finish, um, and then you can see how much space you're saving by not rendering this whole thing just for a, like a quick test render to see what it looks like. Like your brain will kind of automatically fill in what the rest looks like when you look at this all together. So that's, that's a big thing that I used to do to save a lot of time. Um, it's just box select little pieces at a time. I have a time lapse up on Mr. Suicide Sheep's channel. I'll just put a link to that. Um, it's on their art channel. so. It, it's, it's uh, I'll just link it somewhere in here. If you watch that, that's when I was using the 30, or the, uh, sorry, the 1060. So you can actually see me doing all these techniques in that video if you want a good idea of like how to actually do that. Next tip is make sure your scene is optimized. So this kind of goes without saying, like obviously you want to, if you're using cycles, you, um, you know, obviously don't do anything that's gonna make it so slow that you can't even work. So. I'm not the best at like knowing exactly what settings to check and the exact optimal way to place lights so that it renders w the fastest possible. Like, if you want that, I would say just go onto YouTube and just search for like, I don't know, how to make cycles faster. You'll find tons of videos of people going through each and every setting to make it, you know, 2% faster here, 5% faster there, 0.5%. Like, they'll go through every single setting and let you know exactly what boxes you need to check to make it as fast as possible. But to me, the main thing is just keep the subdivisions pretty low. Um, and that brings me into the next tip, which is rely on textures and low poly shapes for all the details, or at least for most of the details. So what I mean by this is um, if I go to my, my old artwork, like I'll see if I can show you an example of this. Like if you look at here, it, it might seem like there's a lot of polygons, but there's really not. Like these, these wires here are probably the highest poly thing. And they're really not even that high poly. They're just like anything, anything that's a, a cylinder, you can usually shade it smooth and lower the subdivisions quite a bit and you won't see that. Um, so even those are pretty low poly. These things here, like all these buildings, you can barely even see them, but they're basically just cubes with textures on them. These things here are just, again, a plane with like a cube sticking out of it. Uh, this light, like this door frame, just a cube. Um, the entire floor here is just a plane with a texture on it. That's what's carrying all the detail. The point is, rely a lot on really low poly shapes like cubes and planes, um, stuff like that, and just put nice textures on them and use that to drive all the detail in your scene, at least most of the detail in your scene. And that will save you a lot of time, uh, a lot of rendering time versus if you have like a ton of polygons and you have really high subdivisions on everything, that slows it down really, really fast. So just keep the polygons as low as you possibly can. And you can still make it look good while having low poly shapes. Like low poly doesn't mean like complete garbage. It just means like you can do something like this. I would count all this, pretty much all this as low poly shapes in here. Um, just not a lot of subdivisions. The minimum number of polygons needed to make it look good from where your camera can see it. Okay, the next one is avoid creating scenes which you know are gonna be GPU killers. So what I mean is there's, like before you go into creating an artwork or an animation or whatever, you can decide, okay, do I wanna make 
uh, you know, a forest thing or do I want to make like some sci-fi thing? Do I want to make some abstract? Like when, you, when you're deciding what you're going to make, try not to choose something that's going to be really hard on your, on your computer that you know is going to be really, it's just going to take way too long on the GPU you have. So what I mean is like, for example, if I look through my old work, a lot of my old stuff, there's no, or there's very few scenes with like big forests and a lot of vegetation. There's the, like the odd thing once in a while where I put some tree models, but for the most part, I kind of avoided doing that as much as I could because like that's, that's an example of the kind of scene that really just tanks the speed of everything because there's generally it involves a lot more polygons and it's just a lot harder to work with. Just, it's just going to slow it down a lot. So now that I have a 3090, I don't really worry about that. But back then that like, I, I purposely would choose things which didn't require a lot of polygons most of the time. So it, it kind of sucks to be limited to only certain things that you can do, but that, that's just kind of the way it is. If you don't want to worry about this is just don't make things that are really intense on your computer. If you, if you can avoid it. So, there's plenty of cool stuff you can do without having a lot of high poly shapes. Um, <clears throat> you know, you just have to get creative with it and, and think about like how you can lower the polygons as much as possible with it, while still making it look good. That's pretty much what I did for the first couple of years of 3D. Yeah, it worked really well for me. So it's, it's, you don't have to, you don't have to make things that are really high poly to get cool stuff. Okay. And the last, the last tip, which, you know, not everyone can do this, but my recommendation is if you can afford it, get a RTX 3090 or 4090 or just the best GPU that you possibly can as soon as you can. Um, like if I, if I was just starting out from scratch again, what I would do is get my artwork to look as good as possible with low poly shapes, uh, like get post as much of that as I could, get some commissions for whatever, doesn't matter, just do whatever commissions you can just to get some money to get a graphics card. And as soon as you have enough money to, to buy a GPU, like a good GPU, get that. And it's gonna, that, like the world just opens up. It's, it's just, life's just better when you have a good GPU. I, I really can't tell you how much better it is with a 3090 than, than it was with like, a, like for me, a 1060. Um, it just makes it so much more fun to do 3D when you don't have to worry about speed. So. That's my recommendation is as soon as you can, if you're gonna buy anything, if you're serious about 3D art, which you probably are if you're watching this far in this video, but if you're gonna buy anything, GPU is probably the number one priority. Yeah, just kind of do a bit of research and make sure that whatever GPU you get, so if you get a 3090, make sure it will actually work with the computer you have. That's the main thing for speed. As long as your GPU isn't getting bottlenecked by anything, that's the main thing to get your renders to actually process faster is just get a better GPU. Yeah, there's one more thing here, like I said, I'll have a time lapse of uh, when I was working on of the of the 1060. I also did one on my channel too. It's like the first video I posted, I think. So you can watch either of those uh, just to see what my workflow was like with a 1060. Like I said, there's still lots of cool stuff you can make without an amazing GPU. You just have to get creative with it. Um, it's just about you know optimizing things and getting creative with how you use textures and lights. And um, yeah, it's it's still possible for sure. But like I said, get, get a good GPU as soon as you can because it does make life a lot better in 3D. Okay, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you around. Peace.